Hello, this is ridiculous. To set the voltage on this MIG welder, one must use those two switches. Maximum, minimum, one, two. It used to get on my nerves, so I changed it to this setup. And while doing this, I made a few other improvements. But this is the subject for another video. In this video I will change two flip-floppers to one spinner. Well, to be precise, to the rotary switch. Actually, many welders use this design. I start with throwing out the warranty. Any modifications made by the user will void the warranty. I decided to go ahead with this project since I got this welder really cheap. I use this kind of 5 position rotary switch. The amp ratings are the same as on factory used flip floppers. This switch has 5 positions. 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. In position 0 no electrical connection is made. In the remaining positions of this switch electrical connections are made by connecting two terminals as per this table. An electrical diagram is a must to figure out electrical connections. To replace switches I need only this small part of it. Here I have the main transformer T1. Two switches S2 and S3 can be set in maximum, minimum and 1 and 2 positions energizing selected sections of the primary winding of the transformer T1. Here I marked maximum as X and minimum as N. At the lowest setup, minimum 1, the current is flowing through all three coils, L1, L2 and L3. At minimum 2, coils L1 and L2 are energized. Next, maximum 1. L1 and L3 are powered. The current doesn't flow through L2 in these positions of the switches. When maximum 2 is selected, only coil L1 is connected. This is how switches connections can be presented. But keep in mind that the position of the switch and internal connection is counterintuitive. When for example position 1 is selected, the electrical connection is made at the opposite side of the switch. Before removing the switches, I verified the voltage without a load at each selection. The voltmeter is connected to the polarity selection ports of the welder. Some voltage is present at idle since the coil L1 is always energized and the secondary windings provide power to the control board. At the lowest setting I have over 18 volts when the switch at the wind is pressed. At minimum 2 over 20 volts. Maximum 1 over 22 volts. At the highest setting over 25 volts. Now I will prepare the rotary switch. The knob is held to the axle by a small bolt. I remove the knob and the faceplate. Those two screws hold a positioning mechanism to the electric contactors section. Careful! When this blue electrical connector section will fall apart, small springs will shoot all over the place. And good luck putting it back together. Ask me how I know. The two parts must be put back together in the same position. Far left is zero, and I mean it. I do not want to get this far ever. 
the mechanism is designed to stop turning left at 0 and right at 4. I glued in a piece of plastic to block the 0 position. This way I have the rotary switch with 4 positions, all with electrical connections. Now, in position 1, all three coils in the primary windings are connected. This is the lowest setting, same as in minimum 1 with flip-flop switches before. When I turn the switch to position 2, the current flows through L1 and L2. Position 3, L1 and L3 are connected. Maximum in position 4 only the coil L1 is energized. The rotary switch is connected and I check the voltage without a load to see if it is increasing by turning the knob to the right. Position 1. I have over 18 volts. Next, over 20 volts. Next, over 22 volts. and the highest setup gives me over 25 volts. Sweet.